What's up, basketball fans? Welcome back to Trash Talk. Bye, we're Rocky Padilla, and we are getting closer to the IBL playoff. And probably this is still Dub Nation Week, so I gotta <laughs> invite Prawira Banu, head coach David Singleton, back to the show. Coach, how you doing, man? And how happy are you about the dub? <laughs> man, I'm too happy. Uh, you know, we're still excited. We're still celebrating. We're not letting anybody <laughs> take away from our, you know, our achievements and things like that. Um, and we're letting the pettiness fly, man. So, uh, <laughs> so it's a beautiful thing. I'm happy for my, you know, my city, my area, and, and my team. So we're happy, man. Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Coach, I appreciate you stopping by. And looking forward, though, to have a fun conversation with you. And I know... I know you are from Oakland, big Warriors fan. Do you feel yeah. missed out for not going to the parade? Oh, man. You know, I luckily enough, I went to the 2017 parade and I got to experience that. But definitely, I, you know, I, I know a lot of my friends and some of my people were out there in the city having a good time. It was a different one because it was in San Francisco this time, uh -huh. which was a little bit different. But at the same time, obviously, a lot of fun. A lot of people so i definitely miss out but you know i'm here for a reason and uh we have a bigger goal for ourselves but did you get a chance to watch the parade though i did i did i watched a lot of it a lot of the stuff that was going on i had like i said i had a lot of people that were uh there so they were live streaming and different things so it was a good experience to see a lot of you know uh high school friends and people from back home all out there in the community so it was a great time and uh like i said i think people are still celebrating it right now so let's keep it up because we know over the last couple of years the hate has been real so <laughs> you know yeah. yeah but talking about the warriors i feel yeah. like prawira has some similarities to the Warriors. You guys have a splash brother, I, I think. Yuda and Abraham. I think you got your little Jordan Poole kid splash in Sultan. And <laughs> maybe Reza could be the Draymond Green. And pa Panu could be the Kevin Looney. And Alan Asadi <laughs> might be the Wiggins. So what do you think okay. about that comparison, though? It's not a bad comparison, man. You know, I feel like I feel like uh, we do, you know, we like to play like them. I think a lot of our style is similar to that. And so luckily for me and uh, the fans and things, we have players that kind of suit that in the Indonesian version. Uh, so you got, you know, Brahm and Yuta doing their thing. And then Reza has, uh, you know, shown those abilities to do those certain things. And then Pandu's the in interior guy, jumps really high. So it's not a bad comparison. I mean, anytime you're compared to the Warriors, I think it's a it's a great honor. But we're trying to get there. We're not there yet. We got to get there. Though. We got to get there. That's for sure. Yeah. And and Warriors are all about creating great culture inside the organization. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Prawira starting to show that through your team chemistry and ball mm -hmm. movement. And during the season, people was amazed with the ball movement that. You know, you guys did to open an open shooter. Can you just talk about the culture that you want to bring in and you want to instill to this team? Yeah, you know, it's a big it's a big thing. I mean, first and foremost, everything is about gratitude. So we really like to, you know, be thankful for what we're doing, being able to play and professionally and in front of your fans and your family and the, and the people of Indonesia. And then obviously the, the the ball movement, the player movement, some of the systematical things we really take from some teams in Europe and player teams like the Warriors where we want it to be kind of an equal opportunity offense uh, where everybody gets involved, everybody gets touches. We think that that uh, makes us harder to guard and uh, we, we it makes the defense as much difficult to stop us. So, you know, it's a big deal. I think the chemistry comes from just guys enjoying playing with each other, enjoying uh, practicing with each other, enjoying being around each other. And that's the environment that we like to create. So, Um, you kind of see that through the way we play, which is kind of a cool thing. And uh, it's something that we got to continue to build. It's something that I wanted to bring here. And I think it's, it's, a, it's a forever going process. Uh, but we have a lot of good players within this program uh, that are helping push that forward. And know about you got a lot of good players. You got stars on your team. Was it hard, though, you know, to make them believe on what you're trying to do? It's a great, a great question, actually. Uh, definitely. I think early on for some of the guys, even like a Yuta uh, coming from the national team, coming from a lot of stardom in college, uh, you know, just kind of understanding his role and everybody has to play a role uh, in a professional team. And 
that there are players even as good as him or better uh, on this team. So just understanding where he can get his looks and touches as well as, uh, you know, being able to be aggressive and be himself. And I think another guy is feared on, you know, a big time star, oh, yeah. been a big time star in college and just him kind of um, understanding, you know, his role and kind of the, the, you know, the ups and downs with professional basketball and just getting through those kind of speed bumps. But I think, uh, he really came on late for us, especially in the second half of the season, and uh, something that I'm I'm very proud to see such young players kind of you know understanding their roles and and, and things. And so we're we're pretty happy with it. Um, there's always a, you know always room for improvement, but we're happy with where we're at right now. I mean, like I feel like you're still a young coach, right? And you <laughs> and you coach a lot of young guys. Do you feel like that's an advantage for you that you could? You know, at least get along with them better, and you know you could just talk to them better because of your age. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> so, man. I actually think I actually agree with you on that. Mm. Um, it's something that I remember when I was a player, even in college, like our assistant coaches and some of our support staffs. The younger guys I would always relate to better, uh, whether they're former players or just guys kind of closer to your age, and you kind of just can communicate with them a little bit better on a mm -hmm. different level, and so. I think so. I think I've been through it a lot uh, where, you know, I've, I've been with the older coaches. I've been with the younger coaches and, and it's not neither one is, yeah. is right or wrong. Uh, yeah. I just think that, you know, it is it is a way to kind of connect with them, maybe with, you know, the, the trends and the <laughs> and the kind of the language and some of the, just the little things that kind of maybe go a longer way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely think that I'm able to uh, really connect with this unit and this team. And so I'm pretty grateful for that. I know you could still play, right? You could still hoop. Did, did you ever play scrimmage with these players? Like, I want to know a no, I want to know a funny story from practice from you, man. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, I definitely challenge these guys. No question about it. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've challenged a couple guys to to games. I don't think we've ever got a one on one with any of okay. my players. Actually, recently, one of our new imports, Kenny Warmly, he's mm. challenged me to a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but only thing I've ever done is shooting competitions with them. Okay. I did scrimmage a little bit with the guys. Um, I hit a three in the corner. I do remember that. <laughs> uh, I remember Reza uh, scored on me one time, so I'll give him that. And, uh, I think I think our team lost, but it was the, it was three coaches and two players, so they should beat us. They should uh, beat us. But, <laughs> Can you still I keep say, up, though? Yeah, I kept up, man. I was actually kind of tired, though. I won't lie. But, but you know, I still kept up. But I will say that, uh, you know, if any of the boys want to go at ones or want the smoke, you know, I'm all <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, we need that. We need that for <laughs> sure. But yeah. let's go back to the IBL. Uh, obviously, yeah. IBL playoff will start in August. I'm not even sure when the exact the exact date i'm not even yeah. sure i'm not even sure where they're gonna play at too right. <laughs> but don't know either. Yeah. 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 but you guys were in a very such a good rhythm uh correct me if i'm wrong you guys were winning 16 of your last 18 games that's right 16 Be of 18 yes before the break and now you got a four-month break and of course your big guy touch uh who had worked really hard and worked really well with the locals he's not coming back you will have two new imports um that will coming in and work with you guys if yeah. i was the coach i'll probably go crazy <laughs> heading into the playoff <laughs> right, <laughs> especially right. with my splash brother are on the national team too right, so right. as a coach how do you approach in pre uh, how do you approach this and you know prepare your team for the playoff uh, you know, it's a, it's a difficult one, to be honest. I think uh, you have to look at it from a standpoint of everyone has to go through it. Now, our situation is a little bit different, and we had an amazing rhythm going on. Uh, we probably were playing some of the best basketball in the entire league. And so uh, those things you do have to obviously pay attention to. But at the same time, uh, we do know what made it work. We know why uh, we were able to do those type of things. And uh, as coaches, we just have to continue to push and help these guys get back to that rhythm and flow. Um, so it is a gift and a curse. I do think that we have to understand that everybody does have to go through it. Uh, so, you know, we kind of are on a level playing field, certain, so to say, we have a little bit of a difficult, more difficult path because obviously two new imports. And then obviously, uh, when you talk about, um, when you talk about our, um, our two national team players leaving as well. Um, so those, those things are difficult to just kind of, you know, re reintegrate everybody into the system and, and, and getting to playing together. So 
it's not an easy task. The good thing is we had, do have a lot of talented players and the system hasn't changed. So a lot of our, you know, our local players will be comfortable with it. Um, and I, I do believe in the two imports that we brought in uh, for the fact that they both are high IQ players and they both can understand and pick up things quickly. Um, as some of you might have seen with our recent games where Kenny, Kenny played very well. So I think that um, it's not it's never easy. And uh, you never want it to happen like this. Uh, I think it's a rare occasion of four month layoff before a playoff. It's one of the, probably the first times in the history of basketball, maybe. <laughs> um, That's true. <laughs> so it's, it's it's kind of a, it's kind of a tricky situation. But I, I will say that uh, you know we just gotta you know embrace it. Uh, we just gotta keep going. And I just think that you know the more time we spend on worrying about that, it, it, we don't get better that way. So for us, we're just at it. You know, daily process, every day getting better, and um, hopefully you know come that time we'll be ready to go. Okay. Before we dive deep to your two new imports, of course, a lot of people ask, uh, are asking me through DMs, <laughs> like asking yeah. me. So what happened to Touch? What well, Touch is not coming back? So now you can hear from yeah. Coach David right now. <laughs> you know, um, to be honest with you, man, it was it was kind of a mutual thing. I think uh, you know Taj is an amazing player. Uh, I was everybody knows that he came in to, and played exactly his role he was supposed to play in our system. He fits so well. And uh, exactly why we brought him, right? Uh, for the reasons that he came, he was, uh, you know, a selfless player, a uh, player that could, you know, create for others and then obviously get points for himself. So it kind of worked really well with our system. Um, it just obviously, you know, you get a break and things happen and uh, different things occur. And so I think there was just a little bit of a, a kind of a mutual agreement to kind of go separate ways, unfortunately. Uh, there's nothing against Taj at all. A great person, great player. Um, I think he would say the same thing about us. So um, it was just a tough situation. I don't think anybody necessarily uh, thought it would happen or wish for it. Uh, but we have a lot of respect for Taj. Uh, we really appreciate what he did for us. And uh, I wish him nothing but the best. And, um, and then we move forward. And now you have Kenny Warmly. A very shifty guy who can score yeah. and distribute yeah. the ball as well. And yeah. big Dennis Miles to help <laughs> you with rebounds and defense. Yeah. Just early on, I know they just came probably like a week or two weeks ago. Like, how right. are they adapting to the team and with your system? You know, it's it's going well. I think, uh, you know, with Kenny, it's been a really, really smooth process. Um, he's a smart, smart guy. Um, you could tell that he prepared very well before coming here. And uh, he's in great shape. Um, he, the guys are really, you know, enjoying the time with him. He's connecting well with them, which is important. And then obviously he's got the talent and I think it's a good situation for us because, uh, it gives us another ball handler, another guy that can play, make and create for others. Um, as you guys saw, he has seven assists and he makes, you know, crazy passes that practice and things. So just envisioning him playing with Yuta and Brom, I think could be something that could be really cool and, and special to see. Um, so we're really happy with that. And then Dennis came a little bit later. So, uh, you know, he's continuing to get in tune with the system. Uh, he's the size and the force that we want inside. A uh, great screener, a great post player, um, and just overall good guy. So uh, people will be able to see that from him, you know, when he plays on the court. And then when he starts to play in some of these scrimmage games, I think he'll make his presence known. But, uh, but ultimately, the big thing with these two guys, obviously, is the talent. And then it goes back to the person, the character. And I think we're always big on Pereira's bringing the right characters into the program. So uh, we're very happy with it. And, uh, you know, they got a lot of work to do. So we got to keep it going. What's the challenge, though, you know, for having yeah. two new imports before the playoff? Yeah. You know, if it's like yeah. regular season, like they got time. They got time yeah. to, you know, blend yeah. in with the team and everything. Yeah. Do you feel like this is like a, another training camp for you? It is. It is. And I actually think I actually think it's like that for everybody, to be honest. I mean, you talk about four months. Uh, it's basically going to be a new season. I keep saying this to everybody. <laughs> If you talk about game one for everyone, it's going to be like the first game of the, the season. I mean, to be honest, I mean, you, you, you think about the nerves, you think about kind of the rhythm and the flow. It's not there. You know, you, you finish the regular season, you go to the playoffs the next week, yeah. usually. Right. And so you're, you're in shape, you're in flow, you're in tune. And I think everybody's going to have a feeling out period, probably in that first half uh, where, you know, you kind of got to figure out, you know, how things are going. Maybe <laughs> you got to make some adjustments. Maybe your shot's not going, you know, who knows? I think for both teams or every team, really. Yes. And uh, I think, you know, I think the big thing for us is just not to 
kind of concern ourselves over it. I do think there is enough time for Dennis and Kenny to, you know, integrate into the system. That's the good thing about the break, I guess. The positive is there is a lot of time. So we're going to get enough games in uh, against other teams where they get in enough reps and they can get a feel and flow of what IBL basketball is. And I think come that time, they'll be more than ready. Plus, I think the locals that we have can help them out, the strong core that we have uh, to kind of help them, you know, with the transition. Mm. And yeah, you yeah. guys will match up with Dewa United also, who got a new coach and a yep. new import, Coach yep. Maxi and Zoran Tali yep. as well. Just talk about that matchup. Do you think the change will make a big difference in the playoff? Um, you know, you never know. To be mm -hmm. honest, you never you never know. Just like you never know with our imports, or you never know with their coach and their and their import either. Um, they have a lot of talent on that team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot of guys that have played in big games in their careers, and and they also have a younger core with some of the, some of those players as well. Obviously, they have you know Jamar, who's been a part of the league for a long time, and Seegers as well. So we respect and we see all of that, but um, you never know. I think the big thing is. Uh, Everybody's going to find out, I think, in the game one. I think that's when you really find out what's really going on and who's, you know, truly ready for the moment and, and the situation and how it's worked out for each team. So, you know, I, I know that those guys uh, are getting better and I'm, I'm sure they're improving and things like that. But for us, you know, we're just focused on us. And I think uh, if we continue to do what we're supposed to do and play the way we're supposed to play the Pereira way, um, we, we think it's really hard for teams to to beat us that way. So, Um, you know, it's going to be a tough battle. It's going to be a great matchup. We think that they're a very good team. Um, but, you know, we're really looking forward to it. You just going to have to see Jamar, huh? In the first round every time. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that funny, right? Isn't that funny, man? Yeah. You know, I mean, again, again, he's a heck of a player. You know, he made a, you know, he did some incredible things last playoff. Uh, obviously against us was like his shiny moment. Um, so, you know, a, a respect to him. Uh, but, you know, again, like I said, I think it's a different situation. It's a new day. I'm with a different club. It's a whole different environment. So, you know, I think I think it's going to be, like I said, a great challenge. And it's something we're looking forward to. So uh, we can't wait. I know. Wait. <laughs> you just want yeah. to just remember that, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't remind me. Don't remind uh, me. Okay. I yeah. know we, did, we, did a, we did a different result now. <laughs> <laughs> no, big, big time, big time, exactly. <laughs> But I want to right. talk about about two big guys that probably could make a difference for you guys in the playoff. Uh, I think they are yeah. still underrated, Reza and Pandu. Uh, mm. I think these two guys have grown and became better in doing their role on the court. Um, yeah. They should be in consideration for national team too, I think, in the future. Just how important these two guys are for Prawira. Uh, you know, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, first of all, Reza... I thought was like a huge X factor to our success this season. I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, a guy that maybe didn't get enough credit and he did, I think by getting his all-star vote at the end, but to be honest, I think it was his best season of, of, as of, to, as of yet for his career. Mm -hmm. And I think it just showed, you know, the system really worked for him. And then obviously the hard work that he put in uh, started to pay off. And so, Uh, Reza is a key piece. He does a lot of different things. He can guard, he can switch, he can rebound, he can shoot, he can, you know, drive and, and transition. And he just does a lot of stuff that you can't get from certain players. And so uh, we really value him a lot. Um, we really appreciate his talents. And I definitely think at some day, some point, he'll get that consideration to go to, to the national team um, as he keeps improving. And then Pandu, Uh, man, you know, I love the guy. He's a great, you know, great person, uh, always brings, you know, the right energy and, and, you know, the smile to his face. And I think uh, just his freakish athleticism, which is super rare, you know, I think in this country is somebody that jumps, you know, that well and is that quick off of his feet, um, you know, combined with some of his instincts to rebound the ball and, and be able to run the floor. And then he's another guy that can switch. He can guard, you know, one through five, man. He really can. And so, Um, that's the versatility that, you know, we appreciate here and, and we love to have. And so uh, both of those guys have been, you know, a blessing for me. And uh, I think that they're going to definitely help us come playoff time. Were you surprised, though, when he catch that oop? Man, I'll be honest. <laughs> I knew it was coming, right? Because he he took off, he threw the hand up, and then you know Andre threw a great pass, and you know here if, if you throw if you throw a great pass in the live, you know you get you get a lot of uh, special consideration for that, uh, maybe maybe a special gift and a reward. So uh, I know he was looking for it, 
Uh, Pandu was looking for it, um, and I'm, I'm glad it was successful. But, you know, he probably should have had two more in that game if you actually everybody gets to see the real video. Uh, he missed a couple. But the reality is, man, he's a threat at the rim, uh, and we're, we're very thankful for that. But uh, as long as he makes layups, that's most important. Let's, let's, keep, <laughs> let's, let's, keep it to make, let's keep it to making your layups first, and I'll tell Pandu that. And then and then you can get you know funky with your dunks, but let's let's make our layups first. Yeah, <laughs> keep it you basic. Know? Gotta keep let's it keep basic. basic man. <laughs> but yeah. now let's talk uh, about your backcourt duo, yeah. Abraham and Yuda. How has yeah. it been like, man, working with probably the best backcourt in Indonesia right now? Man, you know, I don't I don't want to put the labels on it. I'll let yeah. you guys do that. But I will say that, uh, you know, I'm definitely, you know, thankful and blessed to be, be with two of those guys. Not only just the talent, but they're just great people. Mm -hmm. uh, I always say this about, you know, especially about Brom. Brom's a special player and people won't really understand, I think, unless you're really around him or coached him, is he actually works the hardest. He actually works harder than anybody. And when you watch a player that people call a star or whatever you want to call him, which he is in this country – Um, he, he, he busts his tail, man. He works as hard as anybody. And in the game, you're talking about somebody playing as hard as you possibly can. If you watch any game he plays, he puts everything on the line. And, and, you know, nowadays you don't always see that with the best players. I mean, sometimes they're relaxing. They're kind of cool guys. They're kind of chill. They take some plays off, different things like that. And the one thing I respect the hell out of is that Brown plays so hard. And I think every player on this team sees that. Right. And they kind of, you know, uh, get the energy from that and they kind of see that that's the standard here. And so I think you'd have learned a lot from that. And I think uh, it kind of helped him continue to play and, and play as hard as he possibly can and set standards for himself. But I mean, I, I couldn't be more happy with the two. Uh, the one thing, they're hard workers. They always want to get better. They push each other. Uh, they kind of know that, you know, uh, they kind of uh, want, I think Yuta's looking up to Brom. Yuta wants to be there someday. And I think Brom knows that Yuta's kind of coming, coming, at the, coming at his feet. And so I think that they're both, uh, you know, push each other, challenge each other. And I think it's a great, you know, connection and uh, combination that we have. So, you know, we're, we're very happy with it. Um, I, we can't wait to have them back and, uh, and get them back into the flow of things. But uh, they definitely, you know, make my life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I 100% agree with you. I saw Brum uh, last off season. You know, I was recording his workout. Man, mm. that guy, man, for real though. That's why I knew that he was probably like, like three years ago, probably, no, maybe four years ago, 2018. I, ma I made this video about top 25 players in Indonesia. And I right. put Brum as number one. And, oh. and then the next time he saw me, he was like, you're putting too much pressure on me, you know? And then he played, <laughs> he played pretty bad that season. He played pretty bad that oh, season. Really? Okay. And okay. then the next year, though, the next year, he took a leap. Like, he was, like, the best player in Indonesia. And I told him, like, see, I told you. Right. I had you faith in it. you. I saw right. it, you know? Because yeah. just I saw the kid has heart, and he put mm -hmm. the work in, you know? That's why I, I have faith in him <laughs> right no exactly exactly you're right on that man yeah. no it's a good thing he's he's he's, he's earned everything he's got man he's yes earned sir it. and yeah. people tend to forget that you the technically is still a rookie right technically exactly technically <laughs> i mean you know if you don't if you don't count the uh if you don't count the the, the rookie season or yeah. the the Matrix, but i mean yeah. to be honest to be honest i i kind of agree with that because this is the first time you know kind of he's with the professional club he's not with u23 players so he's with older guys and you know some imports and some experienced players and different things like that so i really do think that this is his real rookie year Um, where he's not necessarily the best player on the team and he's not the guy that has to score all the time and different things. So it's it's a learning experience. He's been through a lot this season, to be honest. And uh, I think when it clicked, everyone saw, you know, what he's really capable of. And so um, I, I would call him a rookie. I, I guess I would. Yeah, I would call him a rookie. Yeah. Did he yeah. ever get you really mad, though? <laughs> Oh, man, just just I would just say about every game. How about that? Every <laughs> single game. He uh, he causes me, you know, to pull my hair out. He caused me to lose my voice a little bit. But at the same time, I might be going crazy for 20 seconds later. He might hit a crazy three and, and you know, open up the lead or, or make a beautiful pass or whatever. So, 
you know, he he's uh, he's a special player, a special talent. And uh, one thing he he, he has is, is, is crazy belief and confidence in himself. Uh, that's one thing I always respect about you is he can make mistakes. Um, he can mess up and do two or three things bad and then he'll make up for it, you know, by giving effort or, you know, hitting a huge shot or um, he's never phased by the moment. He's never scared of the moment. And that's something that I think IBL fans and IBL people saw even when he was in college. You know, I went back and watched some of those videos. He just was a stone cold killer. And oh, uh, he never was he never was scared of any moment against any big team or player. So um, that's something that I think Yuta is always going to have, you know, to his advantage. I mean, like, I, he's been, he has been running the team like a vet. <laughs> But, you know, exactly. now, what is the next step, though, that you want to see from Yuta in the future? Um, I just think consistency. You know, everybody mm -hmm. talks about it. I think that's the big thing. Anytime you're a player and you keep wanting to grow and, and as you get older, you want to be more consistent and, you know, just being a point guard, being under, understanding when it is time to get others going and when it's time to be aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. He has the he has the ability to score. He has the ability to shoot. So it's a it's a kind of a, a gift and a curse where he you know he thinks he can you know sometimes get that shot off and sometimes mm -hmm. he can. But other times it's like, hey, you got to be a point guard in this moment and, and, and feed it to other guys and get them going um, to make sure that everybody's involved. So I think it's just be the consistent effort. And then obviously, you know, forever, it's going to be a process with him on defense is, is improving his defensive side and, and playing that side of the ball. But, you know, th those are some of the things I know. One thing, he's a hard worker. Um, he's very hard on himself. And so I know that he's going to continuously improve, but the hunger is there, which is most important and the work ethic work ethic is there. So uh, he's going to be, he's going to have a bright future. Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah. man, he's going to be the number one point guy. I'm calling it right now. Number one point guy in Indonesia in the future. You know, you know, <laughs> I, I think he's on, he's on that track, man. He's on that track. You know, he's still got to go through his process and his steps. You know, uh, there's some good players in front of him, yes. you know, like Prasawa, of course, a very good player. So, but I think obviously it will be his, you know, in the very near future. Yes, sir. Abraham and Yuda are playing for the national team right now, uh, probably until mid-July, I would like to say, yeah. until FIBA Asia. Are you worried they're going to be tired when they come back to pro? Because the schedule is crazy. Bro. Like, when I see the schedule, it's like really crazy. It's tight, man. Uh, you know, I'll be honest. It's a, it's a tricky one. I think, uh, you do, I think they will be a bit. Uh, I do. I think, uh, especially Brom. I think Brom's getting a little bit more time right now and different things like that. But Brahms a machine, man. I'll say that, man. I've seen us play three games in a row, three times in a bubble. And on the third game, I'm like, are you tired? He's like, no, I'm okay. I'm like, what the <laughs> heck's wrong with you, man? You know, like, like something, something's wrong with you, but he's a machine. And um, unfortunately, to be honest, I feel bad for the guys, the players, because they have to go through their bodies, have to go through it. It's just a reality. You know, every team, whether it's Palita Jaya, SM, or, you know, any of the other guys from those teams, they have to put their bodies through those, the, the situation. But the reality is the ultimate prize I think is, is so great that they're going to be willing to push themselves to go try to win a championship. And so I'm a little bit concerned, but we're going to do what we have to do to make sure that they're, you know, integrated back in as well as not overworked um, understanding, you know, what they just been through this entire time. They haven't got a break at all. I know. So, um, so, you know, we, we do realize that, Um, so it's kind of a balance for us as coaches and the staff to make sure that, you know, we, we put, bring them back into the fold in the right way. But, um, I know they know the prize is big, so I think they're going to, you know, sacrifice and be able to put their body through it. I mean, like, yeah, they have one prize already. They won the gold medal in SEA Games, <laughs> you know, it's a history. Hey, first time, uh, first time in Indonesian history, but hey, how proud were you though? You know, I just saw, just yeah. watching them winning the gold medal in SEA Games. Absolutely, man. I was extremely proud. Um, I actually, to be honest, I thought, you know, I thought the chance was silver or bronze, mm. just to be quite honest. Um, and I'm sure a lot of other people did as well. Uh, but as the as they continue to start playing, you know, even after that first game, it was a little shaky. And then they mm -hmm. started to play and really started to dominate teams as they were moving forward. And um, you said, man, maybe these guys have a chance the way that they're playing, the way that they're, you know, moving the ball and shooting the ball in particular. And then when you bring in guys like Bolden and especially Derek, yeah. and I give a lot of credit to this kid, you know, a young kid with an, another fearless player. Um, his time in Australia obviously paid off. Uh, that he was able to develop. And he really was the pr inside presence that I think the national team needed where you're blocking shots, you're dunking, you're a rim protector. 
and he can step out and shoot. And I thought, combined with all of the talent that the national team has, the shooting, the ball handling, the playmaking, you know, it was kind of a, a thing where it's like, man, who can really beat them? That's the way I looked at it because they were so strong in all the other areas um, with experience and shooting. So I was really proud to see it, um, being able to coach and, and compete against a lot of those guys that were on that team, pretty much everybody on that team. So very proud moment for the country. Um, I was proud for our boys uh, specifically because uh, I know they work so hard for that. And, uh, you know, I just was, I was happy. I was, I was happy. I was also happy that they were able to beat Vietnam, um, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of get a little payback there um, you know, in the fashion that they did it. I was very happy. Um, both of those guys, you know, text me after that game, which I was, which was pretty cool, but you know, ultimately I was happy for them. And, you know, the one thing I, I love to see was after the, they won it, they both texted me and said, you know, wow. now we're, we're on to the next one. You know, we're on to the next one, coach. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy for them. And it was a big it was a big accomplishment for the country. Yes, yeah, sir. The next one for you and Prawira is in August. Yeah. This still got a long way. <laughs> like, you got to wait for a still. long time now. Like, probably like time, six man. more. Yeah. Six more weeks. Are you more anxious now? Are you anxious yeah. or are you excited? I think I think I think um. I think I guess I would say I'm anxious right now. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I'm, I'm a little anxious just because I'm like, I'm ready. Like I want to, I want to see, I want to yeah. get this going. Like, but I will say that I, I always find a way to calm myself down and, and understand that there's still a process to this. And that, and that's kind of our way we always talk about as a process, you know, over, over results and things like that. So for us, I think I'm very, you know, appreciative that we get, you know, multiple games in the next month of just playing and playing and playing and working through, you know, whatever we have to improve on and, and getting our imports and, you know, uh, situated because, You know, the more they can be ready when Brahma Yuta return, uh, the better team that we're going to be. And so, um, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a balance act of excitement and anxious. I think it's both, but the reality is, it's a day to day process. As as boring as that sounds, and so <laughs> that's what we're on. That's what we're on right now, man. That's what we're on. Man, yeah. can, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, man, it's crazy. We've been talking about for 35 minutes now. So actually, that's yeah. a wrap. <laughs> that's All a right, wrap. Man. Yeah. Nah, man. Always Thank enjoy you. it with you, man. I always enjoy it. I appreciate you having me on, man. Hey, yeah. man, coach. Hey, for sure, man. I'm thanking. Hey, I'm, I'm, I want to say thank you too for, for, uh, yeah. man, my English, man. Always, man. My English is messing nah, up. Man. I'm in, I'm in Seattle right now. I'm supposed to be having good nah, English right now. <laughs> nah, man, don't worry. You speak well. You got a pass for me. You got a pass uh, for me. Sure. Man. But of course, I would like to thank you as well for taking yeah. some time off, you know, to talk to me. That was really fun, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, probably you raised my team. <laughs> There you go. There you go, man. Man, man. Let's go. Yes, Let's sir. Go, so hopefully, yeah. hopefully we can win that chip, man. Hopefully we can win that chip this season. Step by step, man. We taking it one game at a time. That's all we got to do, man. But we're we're excited and we we can't wait and uh we're looking forward to the competition. Definitely. Yes, sir. So yeah. good luck to you, coach, and good luck to probably Rabano. And once again, thank you so much. And yeah, everybody, don't forget to um support Coach Dave and probably Rabano and IBL playoff. Yes. It's gonna be so much fun. I cannot yep. wait. I'm excited for that too. So once again, coach, thank you so much, and we'll see you guys again in the next video. Peace out, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you.